Hello, everyone. I truly wish I could be with you in Silicon Valley. And it is so fitting that OPEN is meeting in the heart of entrepreneurship and the information and communication technology sector because innovation and so much more is occurring right where you are. OPEN's efforts to promote entrepreneurship, economic growth, and private sector linkages in both Pakistan and the United States have been so commendable. Initiatives such as these that expand bilateral economic ties contribute to a U.S.-Pakistan relationship that is both enduring and collaborative. OPEN has been an important partner for the United States State Department, and we are thrilled that you are playing a key role in our latest economic initiative, the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council. I first met with OPEN in the spring of 2011 when my Office of Global Women's Issues, with the support from Goldman Sachs and the Thunderbird School of Global Management, developed the Propelling Women's Entrepreneurship in Pakistan program. It was a public-private partnership within the U.S.-Pakistan Strategic Dialogue. The program identified high-potential women entrepreneurs from Pakistan who attended intensive business training at Thunderbird. It was tailored to the specific needs of the participating women entrepreneurs in areas such as leadership and financial management. It also addressed such challenges as access to credit and international markets. OPEN was an integral partner in all of this. After the training program at Thunderbird, the women came to Washington, D.C. for additional training and mentorship opportunities. OPEN's role was especially critical because you provided the Pakistani women entrepreneurs with mentors in their fields of business. I can't tell you how impressed I was with your commitment to this partnership. As we all know, women entrepreneurs are the engines of economic growth and a converging number of studies in recent years from the World Bank and the International F Financial Corporation to the World Economic Forum to so many private companies has shown that investing in women is smart economics. These data illustrate how women's economic participation promotes enterprise development at the micro and small and medium enterprise levels, but as well, it is better management and has greater returns on investment. However, serious barriers stand in the way of women's full economic participation. According to a recent report by a UN commission, this participation can cost regions incalculable amounts of GDP growth per annum in the millions and billions of dollars because women's potential goes untapped. All over the world, women still face obstacles when trying to establish new businesses or to expand existing ones beyond a certain revenue mark. Among the big, biggest hurdles are training, technology, markets, mentors, networks, access to finance, as well as discriminatory laws that stand in the way regulations, or entrenched cultural practices. This is why initiatives like the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council, which Secretary Clinton launched at an event on the margins of the United Nations General Assembly in New York last fall, is making such a difference. OPEN was also at the launch and is a founding member of the Council. The fact that both Foreign Minister Carr and Ambassador Raymond participated in this event proves that this initiative has the highest level attention and support from not just the United States government, but also the government of Pakistan. The Council's mission is to promote economic opportunities for women in Pakistan by connecting businesses, universities, foundations, 
and individual donors with organizations and initiatives in Pakistan devoted to women's economic advancement. Many international businesses are already taking steps to expand economic opportunities for women around the globe. For example, Goldman Sachs is training the next generation of women business leaders in developing economies with its 10,000 women campaign. Coca-Cola's 5x20 campaign aims to support 5 million new women entrepreneurs worldwide by 2020. Other businesses are also leading by example. Indeed, many companies operating in Pakistan, like Procter & Gamble, know the value of having women in their workforce and serve as role models for other companies. These companies know that hiring women isn't just the right thing to do, it's also the smart thing to do. So the mission of the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council will be to reach out to companies like these in the United States and Pakistan to contribute to the economic advancement of women in Pakistan. These contributions can take many forms. Companies can offer qualified women internships, scholarships, jobs placement. They can provide trainings in areas like financial management or business planning, product development, and so many other areas. As Pakistani American entrepreneurs and leaders in the private sector, you are uniquely positioned to contribute to the Council's work. You can help fund scholarships. You can urge your colleagues in the business com community to recruit, train, and mentor qualified women, or serve as citizen ambassadors by participating in a Council Speakers Bureau program where you share best practices for entrepreneurs, leadership training, and career advice. You know, it's a simple fact. No country can prosper if half of its population is left behind. Closing the gender gap is the best prescription for economic growth. So I commend your efforts to support women's entrepreneurship. I, I commend your leadership and involvement and engagement in the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council. And I hope we can make this a long-lasting, sustainable partnership that leads to economic growth and development, one that will truly help advance women's programs and progress in Pakistan. Because when women thrive, we all thrive. All of society thrives, men and women, boys and girls. Thank you so much for what you are doing, and thank you for what you will do in the months and years ahead.